Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. Super. Super nibble? I was going to say super power nibble, but that's weird. Super duper penultimate. Oh my God. Nibble. It is the pen ultimate episode of x-men 97 we are finally here we're on the precipice of episode 10 season one finale who knows when we're gonna get season two they have it we need it i can't wait like two years i can't do it i just you know (laughs) i just always have these moments whenever we're covering a season like this and the fact that this is the ninth time we're covering it i do i where does time go away sure does (laughs) oh my god speaking of time some programming reminders. What's coming up on the menu on this podcast? Write it down in your date books. We are covering Doctor Who, the new season. Shruti Gatwa. Uh. It's 15th Doctor. Uh. So our episode on episode three, Boom, comes out this Saturday. So you're getting a double helping this week, just so you know. But we are covering Doctor Who. And so our Patreon members got a special little tiny sneak peek of what is coming down the the upcoming on the podcast um it's very exciting and it's very hard for us to keep this a secret but things are being worked on and you guys will be very happy it's <laughs> a very exciting <laughs> something we're looking forward to but also like a little, a little nervous about but whatever <laughs> we gotta do it <laughs> we gotta do it so yeah make sure you're following the podcast that way you get all those episodes first make sure you're subscribing Sending stars our way. That's how we know that you're listening to us and you like what we're doing. Also, if you have any Doctor Who, X-Men, anything else, little nipples, things you want to, your hot takes, your theories, or just like general love of whatever you're consuming, abo nipples at gmail.com. Yeah. Think of the things that you shout out into the void on social media. You could shout it into our inboxes. With reason. <laughs> Depending on what it is. I'm just saying, it's so easy to put something on Twitter. Yeah. You could also easily just hit send on an email. <laughs> it's very true. All right? Yeah. So, you know, let's get this episode going. Spoiler alert for all of X-Men 97. For all of X-Men. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna- <laughs> the comic books, the movies, the series. Okay. Speaking of the movies, yeah. I forgot. You reminded me. On Patreon this month. The end of this month. X-Men. The first trilogy, we are going back and watching it before the MCU is back. Lots of thoughts on 2000s (laughs) X-Men. Yes, we are going to see the original point when they said, what did you expect? Yellow spandex, where we get the reverse joke in this episode. With (laughs) black leather. (laughs) That's right. Okay, so let us officially take a bite of X-Men 97, episode 9, Tolerance is Extinction, part two, directed by Emmy Emmett Yanamora and written by Anthony Salidi. Professor X arrives to find both his home and team in shambles. Storm and Forge reunite with the crew, only to see Rogue and Roberto side with Magneto. One half of the team tries to knock some sense into Magneto, and the other tries to knock Bastion down for the count. However, even the best laid plans can go awry. Very true. This, you know, I'm before we do broad strokes, of, uh, <laughs> before we do broad strokes of this episode and the season and kind of how we're feeling going into the finale, I am just going to put this out there and say, I don't think this end well, like at all. It's not going to end well. Yeah. I, for multiple people or for multiple reasons. Well, <laughs> it's it's been a trying season, to say the least. And I think that it's only going to get worse from here. I think that we had this small moment of everyone reuniting, but nothing really good came from it other than costume changes. <laughs> we got the family back together for like a scene. And yeah. it was just seething with tension and hating certain members in the group and like already distancing themselves yeah uh so broad strokes Mm. how do you feel about the season going into the finale this episode kind of generally what are you like give me your thoughts i think that this episode really it 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 did that thing that a lot of the episodes do where we start with a little bit of family drama and end with tons of action Um, unfortunately this action doesn't lead anywhere very good. It leaves us on a bit of a cliffhanger, but 
it feels like things can only be bad from here. I think that they did the job of what a penultimate episode is supposed to do. Right. Want you to watch the finale. Yeah, you want to watch yeah. the finale. You're scared for everyone and you just feel like you don't know where it could go. No, nah. no, nah, not at all. Because the interesting thing about this and what I've been loving about this show is that they are taking events and comics and story arcs and everything and weaving them into one season narrative. Um, so I'm very excited. This season two could go anywhere. You know, like Apocalypse is somewhere. He's probably going to show up. Um, Onslaught, we talked about the last one. This definitely seems like it's leaning more into that. Fatal Attractions, what happens with Pharaoh Wolverine. So, like, there's a lot they can do, but we don't know where they're going to go. They could be like, oh, well, you know, since the Fantastic Four technically aren't in it, they could be. Are we going to do the Onslaught storyline fully or not? It's interesting. I love these all these code names for these different plot points that we have here. Onslaught. What was the other one? Feral. Wolverine. Wolverine, feral phenom or whatever. Pheromone, phenom, feral. <laughs> yeah. Those are certain points in the comics. <laughs> it's, it's really fun. Yeah. I mean, as far as this season, I'm very excited for this finale. I'm sad that it's ending because it's been so much fun watching this and kind of going back to that feeling of watching these on Saturday morning on Fox Kids. So it's like it's grown with us mm. and I can't wait for it to continue. I have to admit that this has been traumatizing. Yeah. It's like it grew with yeah, us. <laughs> we really had about five minutes where we got to be like, yeah, X-Men is back. They're so much fun. And then immediately things just got worse. That's it's why like, they gave us 10 episodes. <laughs> yeah. We've all seemed to have blocked out of our memories exactly what happened in the original run of the series. And we're quickly being reminded that X-Men can definitely go dark. Yeah. It's Getting bleak from here on out. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about something kind of fun. The intro, right? They knew we were never going to skip it. And they didn't have to go as hard of changing little things every single time. And since this is the penultimate, I would like to just point out certain things that are changed in this one, right? So in the part where X-Men are running this way, evil mutants are running this way, and the humans run forward, the humans in this one are now prime sentinels. Mm. So that sucks. Also, <laughs> Gene... Which we have some theories. I have some theories, at least, about this. Is It looks like there's fire around her at this point, which there wasn't before. So are we getting phoenix -y Jean? I don't know. And Storm is back in the credits. So. In her new outfit. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Crown and all, baby. Yeah. <laughs> the opening of this is beautiful. It's mm. great. It sets the tone for a very dark episode. We have Professor X waking up in the rubbles of the mansion. We have Magneto destroying a bunch of ships putting back on his villain outfit which isn't great and then we have bastion walking through the silent still town that he had carrying his i mean depowered mother at this point and crying but it was interesting for him to say it's finally quiet now because he could hear machines the mm. whole time and now he can't and it's like are you happy about it are you not so did Magneto do you a favor? Is right. that what you're getting at? Are you okay? <laughs> I just think in seeing Bastion as a character, you can really see kind of how messed up he is, where he's holding his mother, who he's changed into this humanoid zombie machine. She was probably the first one to sign up. Yeah, and he just is like sort of mourning the fact that she's fallen, but at the same time, we're watching him knowing exactly what he did to her. Right. Right. And so we know in the conversations in, you know, the last episode and saying, do these people really know what they were signing up for? Did they know what they were doing? And you have to wonder if his mother knew that as well. I mean, I think at the base of it, right, they had to sign up for this. And I, one of the key points, I think, that he was telling uh, Dr. Cooper was, you know, these people's on the message boards and stuff that were saying it where they couldn't say it out loud. These people all at the base of it didn't like mutants mm. for a specific reason. So. I would say everybody that signed up for it probably is not great. Well, true. <laughs> like I they did, hate them. <laughs> one of the things that we got to see again in the last time, in the last episode uh, recap at the beginning of this was the family watching TV and the two parents turn into Prime Sentinels and the kids are like, what's happening? That would suck. <laughs> right? We're like, we're just trying to watch TV. And, and then like their parents leave, right? I guess to go fight whomever. And then because Magneto shuts everything down, these kids just don't know where their parents are anymore. And they can't watch TV. 
Oh, they're so bored. <laughs> <laughs> they're done for. Just terrible. One of the other things that happens in this opener is we get to see this new power couple of Storm and Forge saving this other really cute couple, Jubilee and Roberto, short-lived. But <laughs> we get to see them. And it was so nice to finally, one, have Storm back with the team. I feel like she's been gone for so long. And then seeing how much Jubilee was so excited to see her. It yeah. was great. I mean, when we think back to the original series, episode one, Storm is one of the first people to bring Jubilee into the X-Men and show her what they're all about. So they have a deep connection, the two of them. So having her back and also seeing her have her powers again, I think is something that, you know, Jubilee can be excited about. Yeah, she's an X-Men again. I mean, yeah. she always will, will be, but. She's an X-Men. And also Forge has his cool X-Men blues on. <laughs> Blue and yellows. There was one thing. I don't know if you said it in the last episode, but you, I know we talked about I it. I had said it, yes. Yeah. I was like, well, is, isn't is Forge's like mechanical arm and leg going to shut down? But that Forge. He thought about he it. He thought about it. You know, <laughs> I think that the two greatest lines in this episode, one comes from Forge where he goes, I thought about it. And mm -hmm. the other one comes from Storm where she goes, impress me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay there are okay i feel like this episode as a whole has some of the best lines some of them are like funny in such a dark episode especially with beast but some of the best lines those two are so good there's no explanation we had these two tech bros talking to each other and he's like i thought about it yeah which like poor beast because his intelligence isn't his power and so he's had to like work to be smart and <laughs> forge is just like I don't know. I just did it. He's like, that's just how it works. <laughs> I just think about it and then I do it. No other explanation. But Sorry, brother. That scene where Storm goes in and she's like, impress me. One, yes, you need to impress the queen. But when they start talking about like nullifier technology, she's like, excuse me? No, you're not. No, we're not doing this. She says thunder. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, forget it, forget it, forget it. <laughs> I like how they just completely ditched that plan just because she was like, no. <laughs> I think Storm, you just bow down to Storm no matter who you are. You have to. I mean, come on, she can control the weather. She will make it rain on every outdoor barbecue you ever plan again. You so will you never better have a watch barbecue. Out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Rain dates doesn't matter. <laughs> They're all rainy dates. So, okay. <laughs> you went too far. <laughs> well, I had to really drive the point home. <laughs> So what did you think about the conversation between Gene, Scott, and Xavier? Okay, let me tell you something about these three. Okay, it's like Scott is just annoying. And you know who everyone hates? Professor X. Gene. No. <laughs> and Gene's just like, bro, calm down. And it's funny though, right? Because Madeline did say to Scott, you know, maybe he did it for us, right? And then sure enough, Professor X is like, I did it for you. Yeah. And so... I think that there is good intention there, but I think one of Xavier's faults is that he has to stop planning others' lives for them. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a downfall of his throughout this episode. You know, it's, a, it's a downfall of Xavier as a whole, mm -hmm. right? He's very idealistic in his approach, and he, he will do things for the peace of everybody when he should be going further in some ways, right? Like, Magneto is obviously the polar opposite and goes extreme in one way and Xavier in another. And that's why I like Scott, because Scott can sometimes be the mix of the two when he's at his best. Mm. And Xavier, I feel like this is one of the first times where if anybody's only had experience with him from the 2000s movie, Patrick Stewart, you can't hate him. Right. So totally. Like in this, it's really showing who Xavier is as a character, right? He left. He was gone for too long. He comes back in this like, I'm going to save this. I know what the right way to do is, right? And they're like, you did these things and now we're at this place because of the path that you wanted us to walk on. Right. And to quote Magneto, said the same thing. He's right. like, we tried to do what you wanted to do. It doesn't work. Now, do I think Magneto's way is going to work? Probably not. But with Xavier, he will go as far as being like, I need to like make this part of Gene's mind go away or dormant this part of it completely going past consent in mm. some way, but he won't do it to other people that he needs to actually do it like villains. And yeah. Stuff. It's like, like it's the just, people that he can control. He actually does. And then the people that he can't, well, he can, but he chooses not to, for some reason. I don't know. I think that like you're saying for the longest time, we all had this very idealist 
idealized version of him. But this is really showing the cracks in who he is, especially someone who is a telepath. And could literally, doesn't even need to go to you to have a conversation. Yeah. Can literally be like, Gene, you want to do this? No? Okay. You know what I mean? Like, he already knows what you're thinking anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I, so it's just, it is interesting that he made all these really shitty decisions and yet he's still kind of doubling down it's, on what they should do. Yeah. He's, he's really, I've always loved Eric and um, Charles and Mac, Magneto and Professor X's relationship because especially when it goes to tensions like this because Magneto is acting in things that have happened to him. He's gone through two genocides. He's literally seen people he loves or people that looked up to him die in his arms. Mm. And so he's going through all this stuff. And then you have Charles being like, I know the right way to do this. When it's like, if you look at the base of them, you look at um, Magneto, his childhood was in a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. Look at Charles. He was in a mansion. Yeah. He had money. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, Coming from where they're coming from, I well, wish they could come to an understanding, right? I guess it's easy to say that everything will work out when everything worked out for you. Right. Yes, he's a mutant and there's yeah. bigotry towards him. But these people who were here during Genosha are acting accordingly to that. You can't just yeah. come in and be like, this isn't the right way to yeah. do that. You well, were late. <laughs> you know, I think that maybe there were three of my favorite lines in this episode. And the third one is from Magneto when he tells him to shut up. Because we were all thinking it. Shut up. Yeah. Could you just shut up for a second? Yeah. And the thing is, is that he left them. He mm. abandoned them. Right. And they had to choose to lead themselves and fix things themselves. And then he comes back and thinks that he has the right to just take, take the reins again. And I do think that's a little unfair. It, it's, it is unfair. And again, he, ha he wasn't there for most of it. it. It's an interesting thing. I feel like he has always seen you know, Eric as an equal in some way. Right. And no matter how old the X-Men get, he still sees them as students, mm -hmm. as people that are teachable, even though they are adults and have gone through things. And I think the conversation between these three in particular is an interesting thing to think about because at what point take the family aspect aside, right? You have a team of superheroes that help people. When is it the time to say, I need to live my life, but are you ever going to do that? Right. There is that family component here. So even if they did leave, like Scott said, I would have had to give Nathan up to the future. All of these things would have happened. If something big would have happened, I would have come back. Mm -hmm. So Charles, it wouldn't have worked. Right. <laughs> anyway, nice try. Yeah. You should have just stayed in space with your bird queen. <laughs> it did not work. It didn't work. Doesn't matter. The entrance of Asteroid M of Magneto doing his magnificent entrance with his asteroid. I love it. You know what I saw? I saw the Aurora Borealis. He said, look at this magnetic sphere around yeah. this. Yeah. It's He's, pretty. He said, you think you're special? Look what I got. Yeah. Can you float around with your yeah. own asteroid? I don't think so. And he's all doing this while one still flying himself and having a full on conversation where he uses words like bequeathed. Like, I mean, how much he's power. nothing but a scholar. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think he's driven by his fury and his yeah, anger, right? Yeah. It just is always fueling him. And we have to remember, I guess, that the world is full of magnetic forces. So he's constantly feeling power. He's constantly able to take that and use it to his advantage. And we see that here in the scene. It's so cool. The it whole, is, yeah. um, what do you think about the team, the members that decide to go with Magneto? I get it. Listen, I, I guess I'm just... Fully on Rogue's side, no matter what. <laughs> I was like, yeah, of course you should throw Trask out of the building and kill him. Of course. I'm kind of like, I get it. I get it. And one of the things that she says is that none of you were on Genosha. Mm -hmm. None of you saw what I saw. You don't know the pain that I'm experiencing. So listen, I got to do what I got to do. And I'm, you know what? I can't help but respect that. I love on her way out. Not only one, does she have her like villain outfit or this, this particular outfit on, but she also has gambit's coat on mm -hmm. which is terribly sad for her to be wearing that I, I also before i get into the point i was trying to make i just thought about in my head when she said he was the most cajun man i knew like okay it's a, it's a it's just an odd thing to say rogue who are all the other cajun people <laughs> right. that you know do we need to know them to see if this is a true fact is it because he's burnt and no crispy? no <laughs> 
he said that I pushed it with my rainy day thing. I think that's insensitive. So (laughs) (laughs) on her way out from the X-Men, she goes out like a boss because then she roasts the team and some of the members. She's like, what is Jean going to die? Been there, done that. You know, Morph came onto the team and how long did it take for us to throw them to the wall? Like, just throw them out. Like it, it needed to be said. But the best part is that she hangs up Gambit's coat on Charles and then leaves. <laughs> I like that when they leave uh, Magneto, Rogue, and Roberto, it's kind of like a... <sighs> yeah. Also, they and all they, can fly. So it's yeah. funny that he like encapsulates them. <laughs> Come on, children. They're yeah. kind of just like looking at them. Bye. Yeah. What did you think about Roberto leaving? I think that he flipped on Jubilee real quick. <laughs> I was kind of rough. Poor Jubilee. She was there with him the entire time. And he's right. like, my mom put a collar on me, blah, blah. It's like, okay. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is very like, when she, he said, what is left for me here? And she's like, me? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I hit that hurt. Remember that hurt. when we smooch after playing Mo- Mojitendo? Mojo? Mojoverse? <laughs> Mer- Mojitendo? You said it right the first time. Mojitendo? <laughs> Motendo. Motendo. That's You're the gone. problem. I was, I was adding the Joe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much for their little summer romance yeah. that has ended. I am, um, you know, it's fine. I, I think it, it just needed to happen. Again, I wish there was like, I like them and I think the story is fine, but I think it is very predictable. Almost. I think it would have been cooler if Scott went, went with Magneto. Oh my God. Yikes. Right? He can't fly. That's why he needs the ore. <laughs> or is Magneto only taking flying members? I think that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair. So the team goes to Maury Island and gets their old costumes. They're, re- they're regrouping. They're coming up with a plan, right? I There were some moments in this episode where I thought like the pacing was a little odd. Like we got a glimpse of a really cool thing and then it went to like another thing. And then when it went back to the other thing, specifically with Storm and Forge up in the sky, like we got that really cool like F4 tornado happening. And it was a cool scene. And then it just like went to them walking mm. in the jungle. I was like, I want to stay with that. Can yeah. We- <laughs> you know, and I thought just the whole storm forge thing in the air, that didn't make too much sense to me. Storm is amazing in the air. Right. And so for her to be completely distracted when forge he- was going to be dying. No, Hi. I don't think that's true. Well- <laughs> Because <laughs> he can't fly. Well, it's not that he can't. Okay, fine. He can't fly, but she didn't need to save the whole plane. He could have. I'm sure they have some sort of ejection. I mean, if listen to me, if in the <laughs> if in the last episode, the uh, Scott, the Summers family can blaze out of a car out of the back of that thing. I think Forge could have gotten himself out. Fine. Well, you know, when things are happening in the blink of an eye, you just got to do what you got to do. Okay, not to be crass. And I don't know how this works, but like couldn't Storm have like. Backwards, like farted. Like a storm at the Sentinels coming at her while also saving them. Backwards farted a storm at the Sentinels. Yeah. No. (laughs) I. (laughs) You just said that about storm. That's how much I believe in her. The (laughs) The goddess that she is. And you want her. To destroy a force of Sentinels with a fart storm. That would have been awesome. <laughs> this isn't Doctor Who. That would have been so cool. <laughs> Come on. I mean, no, but like, I get what you're saying. <laughs> Fine. Don't believe in her. I get it. Let's go to a, a better fight. Okay. okay One sure. that you can't talk about. People Let's doing see. That. Okay. Let's see what I can and cannot do. Um, we got Morph Smash. Morph yeah. is coming out with all of these cameos. Did not expect the Hulk to show up. So glad they it did. It feels almost like wrong when one of the Avengers shows up in this. You're kind of like, wait, what? What am I watching? Well, and that's the funny thing, right? It's that like, I think most people are just like, associ- they are always associated them separately. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. And in the comics, the beautiful thing about it is that they're always interwoven. Yes. An X-Men comic typically will usually only have them. But it's nice to see other people showing up. But like, I remember when we did the research for Secret Invasion, that had everyone. Everybody. And it didn't matter what team you were Usually on. Usually big events, yeah. they will have everybody. But it was really cool to see them all interacting together. Yeah. But so it's even cooler to see Morph kind of bringing those people in. I love it too, because it also, because so far we've really only seen them do like mutants. Mm. And so it's showing that I can take on the physical abilities 
of anybody like the Hulk. And then having that team up with Gene, oh, so cool. Yeah. And they were doing quips left and right. Well, Beast this was. Yeah. Well, even Morph, right? He was like, he said something about like off with your head or nothing like that. But he said something about he said Morph Smash. Morph Smash and smashing his head. And then Beast said, what's the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> Come on, Beast. <laughs> oh, so wait. We need to talk about Beast <laughs> hanging out with a uh, freaking Prime Sentinel Trish. <laughs> what the fuck was that about? Nobody said he was smart romantically. We all know he's smart in the lab. He, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something will come out. I'm not saying there will, but maybe something will come out of like, not everybody signed up for it and it just happened. I don't know. I don't know. That hot cocoa lady bitch. She came in. Oh, <laughs> she had have a little hot cocoa. Yeah, Trish. Trish. yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. That was weird. Yeah, it was weird, but we know what the sound makes. With a one-handed clap. That's right. He bitch slapped yeah. that Sentinel with his own hand. <laughs> the fight between Jean and Sinister was so good. It was mm-hmm. something that was really needed. One, Madeline was with her, so I thought that was really cool to have like that. I'm going to use the thing that I thought made a weakness of me, and she's here with me. Just that scene of her stopping him behind her just abruptly and then shooting him to get a strike. Bowling balls, it was so good. Yeah, I really enjoyed all of the sinister sort of shadow movement that he was doing. I thought that was very cool as well, trying to sneak up on her, coming up from behind her. And yeah, seeing her really take charge and really seeing how powerful Jean is. She is, we still haven't seen it. Like, we've seen like what Madeline can do, right? Which is technically her, but like, I, I, I want like a big Jean moment. And maybe we'll get this in the end, right? I, I have a feeling maybe. A phoenixy type thing will happen. I Didn't think. look good for her. Well, Phoenix usually comes in whenever she dies. So. I mean, <laughs> she brought her husband's consciousness to where she was so she could say goodbye to him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's up in the air. It's like, is she dying? Did she die? Is she just telling him so that way it's like, hey, we still need more time. Like, don't don't neutralize him yet because we need to like stop him first. Mm, that's true. I guess we don't necessarily know her intentions. Yeah. He could know. probably feel that in their psychic rapport. <laughs> it's just them now. It's just who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I did not appreciate though. Speaking of like quips and everything, I didn't appreciate Sinister's. I know jeans, jeans thing. Stop it. He said something like that's gross. I know where y- you be like Madeline ends and you begin or something like that, that. was terrifying. Ugh. And I do like our girl, Jean Grey, even though he tempted her with, I'll tell you whenever I made the switch. And she's like, no, nah, she's here with me. So I liked her not going into temptation at that moment. Jean, Jean has uh, gone to better help, not sponsored um, <laughs> to really come to terms with being cloned yeah. and having been, I guess, captured by him for that long yeah so good cool. for Jean. yeah <laughs> well i'm glad she's worked through that but now her freaking stepson is being a real jerk yeah i that sucks right and it, it makes sense because you knew this was coming because why not like uh, he <laughs> he did do the experiments on him that's why he went to the future so mm-hmm. why would there not be like a winter soldier activation thing for him which it's terrifying but he got such a cool moment. He's like, oh, you know, I'm a telepath. Like, I'm, I'm just as good as you guys. It doesn't skip a generation. It was so cool to see him not just use guns. Mm. That he has this ability, right? Um, it's very interesting. This whole, where it's going, it does, like, lead to different stories. So I'm really interested to see, like, what season two would be like. Specifically with how this one ends. <laughs> Oh, can we talk about it? Yeah, let's go for it. Can we talk about it before we go into like weird theory corner? (laughs) Oh my gosh. I. (laughs) They split up into teams. There's blue and there's gold. And they thought, hey, we're going to the guy that can control metal. Let's send Wolverine. (laughs) I don't know. Like it, it is funny, but it. It had to happen to get the moment. And also, though, Wolverine, who has just been wanting to murder Magneto for years, why would you send him on the Magneto mission? To murder him. But they don't want him to murder him. No, yeah, right. You know what I mean? (laughs) They're like, well, the first time he jumps at Magneto, Rogue pushes him out of the way, and she's like, you're you're too much. Yeah. He shouldn't have been there. Yeah. 
You know, been there. They, he's, they, they, they don't think sometimes. Okay? Yeah. I mean, we needed it, though, so that we, we could get that moment, right? So they come up with the plan of Charles needing to get into Xavier's, or no, other, that is the same person. Charles needing to get into, they have too many names. Well, I have a question. Right. Right. Eric. Yeah. Magneto. Yeah. Magnus. It's kind Magneto. of like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, how, you know, how, like, uh, what's another character? I'm, it's just like a name. It's a name he came up with, right? It's, he's like, I'm not Eric. I'm Magnus. Oh. It's like. What's like, his last name? Nito. <laughs> <laughs> I can't actually remember what, what his last name is with Magnus. Eric oh. Von Nito. <laughs> You're confusing me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we get, he wants to get into his mind, right? And he wants to control him, which is like a big no-no, especially between both of them. It's like a weird understanding. Yeah. It's like Magneto could probably lift his chair. That's right. fine. But you don't take over my mind. It's respect. Right. Mm. Right. And so when they try to do that, um, in the comics, that doesn't go well. Because when he does that and the helmet gets on him, it's like he... I don't want to say possessed, but it's like the darkest, most evil parts of Magneto's mind gets planted into Charles's yeah, mind. Yeah, it becomes like a cage. Right. And then it takes a while in the comics for that to like fester. But like leading up to that, you see Charles is acting weird, like he's more grumpy than usual. And then that's when Onslaught comes, right? So it's like, that's where I'm assuming this is going. It could happen. And we also have the Fatal Attraction story arc, which is Wolverine getting the adamantium sucked out of his body. This was such a pivotal part for Wolverine in the comics. And that's why if you've gone online, you've seen people freaking out about it. Not only because they did the panel exactly what Mm -hmm. it looks like, but because for the longest time, people thought Wolverine's powers were like healing factor and senses. And they thought with what Weapon X did to him was give him the claws. We found out part of his mutation is like bone claws. Disgusting. Also really cool. The healing factor. Went into overdrive because the metal was poisoning him and turned him feral. So, yeah. So everyone that was thinking that Wolverine really took a back seat this season, I think next season he's going to be front and center, baby. Yeah, I'm very concerned with what's going to happen. Things are going to get really dark, but we still don't really know what's going to happen with Bastion. And so that's my big question. He was hardly in this one. He was hardly in this one. You know, Beast and Morph tried to do their little bait and switch thing. It did not work. So we also have the question of, do they defeat Bastion in this next episode? And then they're dealing with the ramifications of these two fights next season. Or do they get defeated by Bastion and have to regroup and try and go into next season with even more problems? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, I will say, you know, whatever feelings about the creator's firing and decision aside Mm -hmm. they are very vocal on twitter Mm -hmm. um and after every episode or leading up to it they kind of give some insights on like why they did it or like homework that you should do and one of the interesting things that i had seen that uh bo de said on twitter was you know it's one of those things where everything comes back to the beginning so at the beginning of the season it wasn't charles versus magneto but now at the end of it we're getting that thing of like, it's all coming back to usually how it starts, but where does that leave everybody? Right. I'm going to be very interested to see how this ends because a lot of pieces could go either way. And I think that we have to remind ourselves that in the last episode, when Magneto was shutting everything down, we got those glimpses of those villains or those old foes kind of being back in action. So where does that even fit in? You know, like I said earlier, apocalypse somewhere, we could have the four horsemen at some point. How is Gambit going to come back? You know, we need that answer. I don't know. I, I think it's, I do feel like the Phoenix is going to come up though, because she's getting really like overtaken where we last saw her. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look good for her. And it would almost make sense for, because she almost got her like a clean slate in her mind. So maybe any defenses or anything to not let the Phoenix in, maybe just she'll let him in. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Is there, whenever Jean is the Phoenix, is there ever a time where she's in control of the Phoenix or is it always an override where she's like evil? Yeah, there's times. Yeah. It just depends on what story they want to tell. You know, there's like the dark Phoenix, which is like scary, terrifying Jean. And then there's like Jean with the Phoenix. (laughs) Well, because personally, I've really grown to love Jean over this season. So I would hate to see her 
have to just to succumb to this again and go through this again and not be trusted in a way. Yeah. It's one of those things where I love seeing the Phoenix. And I think with Gene comes the Phoenix, right? There's typically that's the territory. Um, I feel like we have seen it a lot. I don't think we're going to have the Dark Phoenix saga again because there's literally like a seven parter in the original. Yeah. So what does that mean when the Phoenix does come back? If it's coming back. Yeah. All I remember is that those Phoenix trading cards were always bomb. <laughs> a few, a few things I did want to mention in this episode before we like wrap it up is Nightcrawler again made me want to have his powers because instead of just getting up and walking five feet to Rogue's bed, just teleported. I would do the same thing, which I guess is less energy than walking. Yeah, the five feet. <laughs> amazing. But after seeing what it looks like, I'm like, dang, he must have like really good like center balance he needs no drama mean yeah <laughs> he's never getting dizzy and wanting to vomit yeah the thing i always wonder is does that smoke smell you know somebody on twitter had asked that really what does the bamf vortex smell like that's interesting is it like is it like a small explosion it smells like gunpowder or something that's weird i think we're thinking about the details <laughs> if we had to live with him what would that mean i would hope it doesn't because well, it's like a very stealthy ability, you know, and oh, I wouldn't true. want any like sulfur smelling or anything, you know, I could smell them coming. There's eggs. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing we didn't really mention is their costumes. Mm. So they went back to like very specific costumes. I really like Cable's costume because that's the one from the video game um, that just made me happy. Oh, and we also have to say that Forge is also rocking his costume. Everybody is rocking yeah. a new or alternate costume. And Roberto finally got a costume. Yeah, it's like his like training costume. I Marvel Girl has her costume on. I it's iconic. I don't think it looks good like I, like with the team. Yeah. But like it's iconic, so it's fine. <laughs> I do I I wish personally I wish they were all wearing blue and yellow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, except for except for Storm, she can wear yeah whatever she wants. That's true. <laughs> and I, I did was, like morph sh shoulder pads. That, yeah, yeah. I was trying to see if Beast got new briefs. They looked a little darker than usual. I think. Maybe I don't know. Why doesn't Beef get beef? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's in the doghouse, so Woof. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Final thoughts. Final thoughts going are going into the season finale. I think some bad things are a coming. I don't think it looks good for our X-Men. Do you think anybody else is going to die in this season? I don't think that they're going to kill anyone, but I think people are going to take on different forms and be different characters than we've been with. Which is exciting because I feel like we typically don't see that, right? Mm. Or at least in media. Oh, one thing I did see. Um, this is from the internet. This isn't just me knowing this because it would be almost insane for me. For me to know this is that Wolverine, when he stabs Magneto, which we did not say, stabs him. And it's the first time in animation that there's blood on his claws. Like he actually stabs somebody, which is crazy to think about that. They had this like crazy, tiny Canadian running around with knives on his hands and he hasn't stabbed anybody. I think he should have stabbed him more. It's a very like Thor should have gone for the head. Yeah. You know, take them out, babe. But also, I don't want Magneto to die. I love Mag Magneto was right. I don't care. Like, he's not going about it the right way, but he's right. I guess the question is, though, what is the right way? I don't know. Yeah. But so far, I'm on Magneto's side. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Rogue yeah. and Magneto. I just <laughs> Rogue Nito. Yeah. <laughs> and Sunspot. Oh. He's there, too. <laughs> uh, Magneto Roberto. <laughs> Rogue All right. Rogue Berto. Okay. <laughs> That's too many names. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us your thoughts. What do you think going into the finale? It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Which storylines do you want to see progress? Oh my God. All mm -hmm. of them. Um, yeah. Saturday, Doctor Who. After that, next week, last episode 97. Okay. Exciting times ahead. See you Saturday. Bye. Goodbye.